Moin! In this episode we're delving into Pokeballs and how to make the sometimes ordinary 3D print a bit more exciting. Originally intended as a test, I decided to share my results and insights since I record everything anyway. This time we'll be discussing adding color among other things. Let's get started. First, we'll be creating this beautiful Pokeball in gold gloss white. Personally, I find FDM 3D prints very enjoyable, which is why I actually prefer them over resin prints. They are nicely precise and reasonably sturdy. Additionally, you can practically use them straight off the print bed. However, they have the disadvantage, for my purposes, of having visible layer lines. You can see it well here. In order to achieve such beautiful reflective surfaces, we need to eliminate them completely. And here, of course, sandpaper comes into play again. I'm not interested in getting into microplastic production, so this time I'll just sand it roughly and smooth the rest out with Carfilo. That's the plan. Once the Carfilo is dry, you can sand it again and repeat the whole process multiple times until the print is completely smooth. You can actually just paint the white underside of the Pokeball with white acrylic spray paint and then polish it with a series of fine sanding steps if, like me, you don't have the necessary flawless painting skills. The top shell will be gold plated, therefore we need to electroform it first. Regardless of what you use, it all works well as long as you know what you're doing. There are copper conductive paints, silver conductive paints and the possibility of graphite paints. I actually experimented with micro graphite and we'll see when I present the results. For this project I am using copper conductive paint again. I dilute it with acetone in a 1 to 2 ratio. For those wondering why, it's an electrically conductive paint on which we can deposit metal with electricity. The goal is to achieve a thick layer of copper. To apply the paint evenly, I designed a drill adapter that is perfect for this shape. Clean the 3D print well, then spray it with 300 kPa. Be careful not to spray too thickly, as the acetone can also dissolve the car filler. Then let it dry thoroughly. Watch out for errors. And now for the trickiest part, electroplating or electroforming, call it what you want. For this, I have been using the same acidic bright copper electrolyte for a long time. I have 5 liters of it and a small regulated 5 amps laboratory power supply. I hang two copper sheets wrapped in coffee filters in the bath, which serve as anodes. I connect both of them to the positive pole. The conductive 3D print is then connected to the negative pole in the middle. The power supply is now set to the current density of 1 amps per square decimeter. In my case, that's around 1.5 amps. The whole thing remains in the bath for 4 hours, during which a copper layer of about 0.2 mm thickness forms. Looks good already, but it has a few errors. I will get to what costs them later. Now a few words of warning and caution. The electrolyte contains sulfuric acid among other things. This is what happens to organic material as seen here. Electrolyte splashed on me. This happens more often than you might think. Please always wear eye protection and a respirator. It's best to wear a lab coat too, if you don't want to keep buying new clothes. And this is what the acid does to the copper. Eventually the anodes are depleted and the copper ends up on your 3D prints. They will start to oxidize, but don't worry, you can remove the layer with polishing paste. Of course, there's always something to complain about with the surface. Let's be honest, I don't achieve total flawless surfaces either so sandpaper is needed. Usually 1000 grit and up is sufficient. You can also use a polishing wheel to buff the copper. A 
copper is nice and all, but now we need a layer of which we can electroplate gold later. Nickel and palladium are suitable for this purpose. Nickel is pretty toxic, you know, so wear a respirator and all that. I now electrically degreased the copper print with a galvanic degreaser and a voltage of about 6 volt. I use stainless steel as anode, which literally blasts off the grease. Then I activate the copper with a 10% citric acid solution. It all sounds complicated, but it's easy and unfortunately necessary. Now activate a nickel anode with 10% hydrochloric acid, put it in the nickel bath and connect it. My nickel electrolyte works well at room temperature and I simply use around 2 volts. The whole process takes only a few minutes. Unfortunately, I'm already running out of space with these containers. When it's done, take it out of the bath, quickly rinse and dry it. Okay, let's close it. Hopefully, there won't be any bad side effects. Now the same happens with gold, but this time not in a bath. Take a suitable gold electrolyte. We apply it with a galvanic pen. Use a dedicated graphite anode and a dedicated non-woven material. Connect the 3D print cathodically, so positive to the anode, and then deposit it on the nickel layer in circular movements with the specified current density. Easy peasy. For understanding, you're not brushing anything on, but rather constantly depositing from the electrolyte. The duration is basically what counts. The longer, the thicker the layer. Done! Now, let's assemble the first Pokeball. It's so straightforward and I think it really looks really cool. Considering it was originally a PLA FDM print, it's nice and smooth with a shiny finish. Now, let's break away from our usual habits. I want this Pokeball to be reflective, red and silver. Red? How do we do that, you ask? Well, it's super simple. Let's make a new Pokeball. But this time, we will electroform both halves. During the process, I noticed that the quality was getting worse and I was getting small defects on the surface. When I looked into the electrolyte, I could see why. That's why it's important to filter it regularly. Don't forget to copper plate the button. Then polish again and coat with nickel. The underside is finished and the top has a fantastically glossy surface. This serves as the base for transparent red acrylic paint. I put the shell back onto the drill adapter and now try to apply it evenly with the airbrush while turning it with my fingers. It works amazingly well. The metal layer plus the paint creates an incredible metallic effect. Now we can assemble this Pokeball as well. I'll use regular glue and filament scraps for that. And just like that, it's already put together. Personally, I didn't realize how strong the effect of painting ultra-smooth electroplated 3D prints can be. Unfortunately, this camera can only partially capture it. For me, this definitely opens up great possibilities like props and cosplay stuff that is difficult to distinguish from real objects. I mean, purely optically, the metalized plastic cannot be distinguished from solid metal. Of course, electroplating at home requires a lot of patience. You have to start small, but eventually it will work out. There are still a few more things to see on my channel, the highlight probably being the Mandalorian helmet and the lightsaber. These are relatively large projects and soon there will be something very big again. If you've become interested, feel free to write in the comments or write whatever you want in the comments. Thank you for watching. Tschüss.